So this is 10 ways, maybe 11 ways that I got my migraines under control. If you've been watching my other videos, you probably know by now that, especially last year, I had really, really bad migraines. I've had migraines pretty much since I started puberty, but last year they really hit hard, um, and these are some things that I did to completely change my physical life around. So the first one I would say is a change in my diet. I was the only vegetarian in my family, and I was eating a lot of freezer food um, and corn and tofu, which wasn't very good for my body at all. So I was trained, ugh. so I swapped over to completely organic food, um, and I would have things instead like salads, like really beefed up salads with like nuts and seeds and fruits and vegetables and potatoes and other kinds of carbs and and oats and leafy greens and I'd have so much in my salads and they were amazing and they were so fresh and so yummy um, and that was a really big change in that I felt my body was actually getting proper fuel um, and not like fake food and I touched again like on the corn I was eating a lot of corn food which a lot of it is tofu based um, and something else I did was I cut out soy so I wasn't having dairy anyways so I was having a lot of soy milk and I'd have soy milk every single day on top of having tofu as well um, and actually I, I've learned last year that soy is something that a lot of our human bodies are intolerant to so I guess it was if we have a lot of soy it acts as like a slow poison to our bodies um, which isn't very good so I completely cut out soy and I think that made a really big difference as well along with eating the completely organic foods um, so like I said I was eating organic I cut out dairy so consequently I was eating vegan um, and I wasn't even trying really but um, I cut out eggs as well because of the cholesterol because um, I just wanted to have a clean diet that was just literally just fuel for my body nothing out of like enjoyment or whatever um, and that way I found a love for like really fresh food food um, and I didn't crave anything else like anything fatty like milk or eggs um, and after having soy milk cutting out soy I looked at other milk alternatives and found amazing amazing things that I loved especially like cashew milk like I never would have tried that otherwise and I think that's so creamy and so nice um, and yeah so that's something I did as well as other kind of milks like coconut almond hazelnut oat milk you name it. Another thing that I was doing last year was that I was going to the gym and I was trying to put on a lot of muscle. So I was taking supplements like BCAs and protein shakes. Now BCAs, I cut out and then Shiraz started getting headaches so he cut BCAs out as well and that stopped his headaches. So BCAs, literally if you're going to the gym and you're having BCAs and you don't feel very well, stop having them because it's not necessary to be able to put on muscle and be able to get healthy and fit physically. Um, so we cut out BCAs because they were not good for our bodies. Something else I did as well is I made a protein swap, a protein shake swap from non-vegan to vegan. I stayed with the same brand, but literally I just went onto the vegan formula instead and that changed my body a lot as well. Um, I was getting a lot of headaches from having the non-vegan protein shakes and then moved over to the vegan ones. Obviously kind of more fresher, more organic um, and that was something my body agreed with a lot as well. Moving on to the next point, which is still kind of dietary, but it's a big point in itself, was caffeine. Um, so I'm a chocoholic, like I love chocolate, but it's got caffeine in it. Um, and I love tea, and I love black tea, um, and like English breakfast tea. And I stopped having those things because of my headaches. Um, so I stopped having English breakfast tea and moved on to more herbal teas and found amazing tastes like that. So that was something that benefited me emotionally because I got to experience more teas um, and then something else which you probably don't know is a lot of migraines are as a result of the liver um, and so I'd have caffeine twice a month like like a, literally like a cup of coffee twice a month or once a month um, to be able to just cleanse my liver out because caffeine is a like a liver cleanser that's why you have caffeine if you're trying to sober up but also if you do drink alcohol and you do like not eat very well then your liver's going to be more blah, and it's going to make things like migraines worse and other things in your body worse um so that's something to bear in mind if you do have alcohol as well which i don't um yeah. and another dietary thing which again it has to be a separate point is refined sugar
So I love sugar and especially recently I said I've had a major sugar addiction to the point where I'm pretty sure I gave myself type 2 diabetes. Um, so that wasn't very good. But cutting out refined sugar was a massive, massive thing for me as well. Um, I keep saying that about all of them. They're just so all important. But yeah, cutting out refined sugar really wasn't very good for me at all natural fresh sugars like pineapple grapes oranges like that's that's good for your body like in moderation still um but refined sugar is honestly just it's just disgusting like yeah it's so like yummy to eat and stuff but like it's just it's just disgusting like why are things like that even allowed to be made and marketed especially towards kids as well like, i think that's utterly disgusting um refined sugar causes so so many health problems um including migraines as well so just cut out refined sugar so whilst talking about that i was i said about you to cleanse your liver so the liver is probably the main thing with migraines i did get acupuncture for my migraines as well which helped decrease them a lot like i was able to get out of bed and things um so that really helped but something that my acupuncturist focused on was my liver points and that was pretty much the only thing she focused on was just trying to cleanse and strengthen my liver and that i never really understood that because i was like i don't drink i eat completely organic foods like i don't have like anything bad really that goes into my body that my liver needs to cleanse to be like a clogged filter like it didn't make sense and then Sharaf, bless his soul found an article for me that was based around the liver and migraines and how it's a big cause of migraines. And like I said, I, my, I thought my liver was fine, but your liver gets really, really affected when our mind and mental health gets affected. If you're stressed, anxious or depressed, your liver will kind of be the same. And that's why even though like I don't drink, like the food I ate was fine, my liver was still causing me these migraines because I was causing stress, which affected my liver so badly that I got migraines. So getting control of our mental health is a really big thing as well. I was really uncontrollably anxious and sad and I overreacted so much to everything this time last year, which was something really hard to get to grips with. Um, and I guess, again, Sharaf, bless his soul, was the one to say to me, like, Jasmine, I love you, but you need to stop overreacting. And obviously me overreacting, I was just like, <laughs> um, but he was right, like, you get in a habit sometimes when you're overly stressed or anxious or depressed and you do overreact and you might not actually have any major issues but like your body is just used to this kind of oh you like you left me on my own like you, you know like that kind of feeling um something i did personally um was that i went on a five class anger management course um, I wasn't like an explosive angry person, but I was very angry inside my mind and that made me break down. Um, so things like that, luckily in, in England or maybe in America, I'm not sure where you live, but we can get this for free here in England. Um, so really utilize those resources. You don't have to tell anyone about it, um, but again, you don't need to be ashamed about that either. It doesn't define you in any way. Um, but obviously if you don't want to talk to anyone else about it, you can do it yourself. You've got like YouTube, you've got like self-help books, um, and things like meditating and that. So definitely trying to get your anxiety, depression, and stress under control. I do want to make so many videos separately about that because that's a whole other health topic to go into. Um, but just so you know as well, your mental health affects your liver, which can ultimately result in a migraine. Okay, so moving on to the next, um, Thing that helped me with my migraines is trying to deal with the migraine at the time so I cut out painkillers because I was getting very very tolerant to them and to the point where like even if I had if I wanted to take a painkiller for something like Christmas Day or my birthday or a meeting at work or even going to work I couldn't because my body was too tolerant to them so I wanted to detoxify my body of painkillers so if I needed to be better for a certain event, I could take painkiller and be okay. But also as well, I wanted my body to be strong enough to be able to deal with it so that I wouldn't get as many migraines in the future. So that obviously created a really horrible migraines after, whilst my body was getting used to life without painkillers. So things I used instead in the like short-term relief was things like Tiger Balm, um, and I that 
I use so much Tiger Balm until my head is probably burning, which I probably shouldn't do, but it does help short term. But also I want to mention as well is I've used the same Tiger Balm pot for over a year and I use a lot of Tiger Balm as well. Um, and it really does last, even though it's a small pot, it's worth every single penny. Um, so please put your health first sometimes and spend the dollar. But something else I would do is I would um, put like ice packs on my head, but I have a little hack for this. So most ice packs are like just like straight, aren't they? And if you put that on your head like a circle head, that's only going to get like a tiny part of it that's actually touching the ice pack. So luckily for me, I have drinkers that I live with and they have wine coolers, which are like ice packs which go in like a circular formation. Um, and you can like cut these up on obviously buy one cut them up and like wrap it around your head and then like, that way the ice pack is like the same shape as your head and the whole ice is touching your head as well um so that was really helpful for short-term effects also things like essential oils because a lot of essential oils are very relaxing which helps with the anxiety um and then also a lot of essential oils are anti-inflammatory which a migraine is basically where your the the veins and blood vessels in your brain swell up um so anything to like stop that inflammation but also to stop the anxiety and stress because that will also stop the inflammation um i found essential oils really useful for that especially lavender oil um but again be careful with essential oils because if you use too many drops so i'd say one or two maximum if you use more than that you can actually cause yourself migraines and other health issues so be aware of that when using essential oils so something else i would take um as like a supplement would be feverfew this is something in like the holistic health community which is so big for migraines and um, so i got some capsules from holland and barrett which, which had feverfew in um and it says to take them every single day um and the warnings were that your body can be reliant on them and it can have kind of like a um like where you what's it called when you miss when you miss something like on your drugs i don't know you can kind of get reliant on that and i didn't want everybody to be reliant on anything because when you again come off it you get headaches so i was like there's no point in that so i just take a few, a few here and there if i'm feeling a bit under the weather or i can sense a migraine coming and that can kind of battle that another thing as well which is magnesium spray um so these are what i got from holland and barra this is the same bottle as i got last year but i also got a mini version as well just to keep in my purse and handbag um but magnesium is a really big overall health one which is something our bodies lack even if you do eat meat as well um most of our bodies lack magnesium and the best way to get magnesium into the body is to absorb it through the skin so a spray oil of magnesium is always best um the initial effect when you spray it onto your body it can be really itchy but actually the itchier it is the more deficient of magnesium you are because your body isn't very used to it so it's trying to like push it back out of your body um so again you can't really overdose on magnesium unless you like spray it use the whole bottle of spray and it doesn't itch at all um most of us are so deficient in magnesium and that really really helps migraines as well i guess something on like supplements and pills but on the reverse something i stopped taking which is artificial hormones and i think that was probably one of the biggest changes emotionally um but also for my headaches as well so artificial hormones like i don't know like women get migraines Statistically, women get migraines more than men, and women kind of get pressured to go on artificial hormones, um, which honestly, really, really not good for our bodies whatsoever. Doctors say they don't affect your fertility, but I've had so many doctors admit to me that it does affect your fertility. Because every time I've gone to see my doctor and said, what are my contraceptive alternatives? They've said, like, there's, there's, there's other things. It's like the copper coil, which is like non-hormone coil, and that, kind of will stop you getting pregnant and um, without hormones as well and even when I went I had a consultation for that my doctor said yeah that's good because that means you have a less chance of getting infertile on artificial hormones so you know like even if you you don't care about being fertile like the more fertile you are the healthier your body is so like artificial hormones are horrible and if if you yourself aren't a hundred percent sure on them then don't go on them because whoever you're with like 
you don't need artificial hormones. Unless you are taking them for health reasons, then you do you. Two more things which were revolutionary that I learned was the fact that we breathe out 70 to 80% of our toxins. So, most of the time, most of the time, most of the time we spend inside. And we're breathing out 70 to 80 percent of our toxins so most of that toxins we're breathing back into our body the stuff that our body's trying to push out because it's bad for us we're breathing back in so have your window open as much as you can get fresh air as much as you can like i said in my morning routine video sometimes it's cold and you can't see with your window open but as soon as you wake up you open that window and you stick your head outside because you don't you've been breathing in that same air that's got all the toxins in that your body's trying to release and you're breathing it back in like ugh. fresh air was a big one for me um and that really changed how i felt fresh air made me feel a lot calmer as well whenever i'm really anxious or stressed i'm always like i can't breathe i need air like it's too humid um so yeah make sure you get fresh air and so the second revolutionary point which is probably my biggest health tip is earthing I've got a short video on earthing already, but basically it evens out your positive and negative electrons in your body, which if you're unbalanced, going back to Galen, um, <laughs> the historians out there will know who Galen is. Um, but if you're unbalanced, then like your body's just gonna react not well. Like if you're overly stressed, not good. If you're overly underweight, not good. Like you need a healthy balance. And when you're unbalanced, it's not good so things as minute as electrons like you know like if if like we can't even balance like major things in our lives like weight stress anxieties how the hell are we supposed to um balance like tiny things like electrons earthing kind of sorts all of that out and basically earthing is when you have skin to skin contact with the earth it works best when the soles of our feet are contact with the earth so that can be soil grass trees any plants water sand rock um and that helps earth us and obviously the soles of our feet are best to connect with the earth for earthing because ancestrally humans and homo sapiens didn't have shoes so our feet were the main things touching the earth and therefore kind of created like a the best kind of way to communicate and balance these electrons um obviously you can't always get out to earth especially in winter months so i would suggest investing in an earthing mat which i bought and that changed my life um, and i have it on my bed so i get earth every single day but if you don't want to invest in anything you do want to do it naturally it is recommended to earth yourself for at least 20 minutes a day and that can kind of balance you out Lastly as well, it's kind of an obvious one, is not to put your, your body and your mind through too much stress. Um, so I was going to the gym trying to put on muscle weight, um, so I was doing like weightlifting and stuff, and I got all these migraines and I was like, I need to take a break. Um, and instead I started doing like stretching and blood flow exercises, and that made me really in tune with my body. Um, so when Sharav did show me this article about your liver, like it made sense to me because I was like understanding what my body was trying to communicate to me. Um, so yeah, I, I would definitely suggest kind of less intense workouts for your body whilst you're healing. Um, and like, especially like stretches and blood flow exercises and meditation, like really try and do that with a calm, open mind. Not try and judge yourself or push yourself too hard. Um, and that can really make you in tune with your body as well. So you know in the future, like you can sense it more um, and prevent it. And obviously you can kind of tell when your body's not reacting well to something more. Um, and that makes a better relationship with your soul and your body. Um, so there were the 10 or 11 things that really changed my life around and helped with my migraines. I'm, I'm trying to implement these things and keep up with it all the time. Um, so even if you adopt a few of those things or you adopt all of them or if you have any more as well, do let me know, write down in the comments because we need to help each other with these kinds of things. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I really hope you do try one of these things. Even if you don't get migraines, I just want to better your health generally. Um, and let me know how you got on with it. So, bye.